Good afternoon, everyone. So you know that due to this quarantine situation, we have some restrictions with our clinical examination of our patient. Due to this, I made this video to explain you how to make uh, your uh, clinical case presentation, as it is a very important part of your education in traumatology and orthopedics. And uh, this part, this is a part of your final module test. You'll have some scores for these. So we have developed special scheme for you. You may go to the Moodle site, Traumatology and Orthopedics. You know the site already. And we'll go to the topic number seven. From this topic, you can download or see the file, the case scheme. There are two links. The upper link is not working. The second one, you type it. This is a case history. You go to this, I want this link. You can see the file for downloading. Here I have this file, which was downloaded. This is actually the scheme, and you may do it in various ways. So many students ask how to present these. Should it be a doc file or should it be a PowerPoint file? You can do uh, the way that suits you better. You can print it out, fill it with your pen and scan it. You can use this scheme like a reference and do your own document as a doc document, doc format, docx format in Microsoft Word. You can do it as PowerPoint presentation. But main things that should be included in this presentation, these are, first of all, you should write the name of your patient. We understand that you are not in a hospital, so we developed the concept of virtual patient. So you're developing your virtual patient, you have your diagnosis, so di you should choose the name for your patient, you should choose, you should put your name and your year and your group, and then you put the information about your patient as age, gender, address, and then the next part is a diagnosis. So there are a few diagnoses you should put here. These are diagnoses of uh, directing institution if your patient was uh, directed, transferred from other hospital. The diagnosis of admission department, this is a first diagnosis that is put by a doctor, GP doctor. Next, you go to the clinical diagnosis and final diagnosis. If the surgery was done for your patient, you should describe the surgery, the date, time, and method of anesthesia. If possible complications were present, you should describe it here. And the normal parts as are uh, anamnesis, patient's complaints, and anamnesis of uh, the disease. So what is important in this part? You should describe uh, the main complaint which have a patient with your pathology. If it is a fracture, so it will be it would be a pain, it would be inability to use uh, this extremity, so-called functional disorders. It may be inability to walk. If it is injury of lower extremity, a inability to perform some activity for arm fractures or wrist fractures. If there is open fracture, of course, very common scenes are complaints on pain, inability, uh, presence of the wound, and bleeding, of course. Next part. As uh, analysis of morbi, we should uh, obviously you should uh, tell about how it happened. 
where, what, what what were the circumstances of the injury. And we are interested a lot about how much time have passed from the moment of the injury and what was the violence of injury, what was the mechanism of injury. Remember to note that there are two common mechanisms as direct and indirect mechanisms. So you should mention these in your case history. Now we we'll go about life anamnesis, uh, problems or other disease or other surgeries that were uh, happening with this patient before. Previous illness disease, occupational problem, uh, uh, activity, some uh, harmful habits, and so on. And the allergies, these scenes you should, uh, this is a standard scenes you should mention. Then we will go to the physical examination of the patient, about his general condition, about his gait, his constitutional type, and so on and so on. Of course, you should mention his pulse rate, blood pressure, and uh, we'll go along all systems. In short, of course, because we have uh, a case on orthopedics, so our main um, focus will be in the uh, place of injury. And of course, important part is describe the muscle strengths. So remember, we have five grade score for these, so you should appreciate the muscle strength for extremities. Well, quite important part is the measure, measuring of our uh, extremities. We describe, uh, we make it, you can make it as a table, and you should mention the length of all extremity, all upper extremity in its parts, like humerus, forearm, lower extremity, femur, and tibia. You should put here uh, um, actual values. You may use your maybe a friend, class, a group mate to perform measurements. The main idea is that you train yourself how to measure different the lengths of extremities. Of course, if you're talking about your virtual patient has a fracture of tibia, for example, you may find some shortening of this tibia on this side if comparing with the normal side, non-injured side. The same is about measuring of uh, range of motion. Wait a minute. Okay, we'll go to this next page. So you should measure the range of motion for all joints and you should feel the stable. It's quite important for you and we'll see how you understand that normal range of motion in the joint or decreased range of motion if there are any fracture around. Okay, this is quite important part. This is a local status and it describes the presence of the fracture. You should put here very fine uh, clinical signs for fractures. So remember that main signs for displaced fractures are deformity. To describe this deformity, uh, if it is elbow joint, remember about Gutter triangle or Mark's line. Uh, if uh, you're talking about hip joint, you should describe Rosa Nalaton line. If it is dischanged, you should describe here the shortening of extremity if it is acute. And as well, you should uh, mention about pathological mobility and abnormal place and crepitation as well. So these are very fine clinical signs. And as well, you may see some bruising, you may see some hematoma, you may see some uh, edema. These things are uh, present usually for for fractured site, for fractured place. Let's go on. Next part of your case history is uh, you should sustain your preliminary diagnosis. So preliminary diagnosis, you verify it, but you're basing on your physical examination. That is an important point. Then you are doing uh, additional methods of examination like X-rays and you will have a final diagnosis. You may use X-rays, you may use CT scans, but you should 
uh, you should describe this in your case history. So these are uh, additional methods of investigation, like general blood analysis, urine analysis. Then we'll go about X-ray. Very important point is you should make X-ray, you should describe this X-ray for your virtual patient, of course, uh, as it was before treatment and before surgery, or if the surgery was done, so you should describe it as, as the surgery was done and implant should be described as well. Of course, you should mention the position of bone fragments and you should mention, of course, the uh, uh, stage of healing. So if the surgery was done just yesterday, of course, we don't see the cows and we don't see the signs of healing. If the surgery was done before, long before, like a few months, a year ago, you should describe the stage of healing. If other um, concomitant disease were present for your patient, you should mention this in this part. And differential diagnosis should be made with other injuries of this area. So if you're talking about femoral neck fracture, for example, you may have a differential diagnosis with interpochenteric fracture or with a fracture of the pubic bone, superior rami of pubic bone, which is very common for all women, uh, if all with soft tissue injuries of this area. Then we are su sustaining your clinical diagnosis, its principle, concomitant, and complications if are present. And then you go to a very important part as treatment of your patient. So you should describe which scenes or which medicines are you prescribing for your patient as non-surgical management with dosage and uh, duration and frequency. And then you will go uh, to the operative method if it was performed. Nowadays, you know, most of the fractures are treated uh, with operative methods if these fractures are displaced and the patient is treated in the hospital. We use this for better and quicker rehabilitation of our patient. So you should describe as surgery, surgery uh, was done and an operative protocol. Yeah, one diary for your patient, how he, he's feeling, how your virtual patient is feeling himself, and of course, prognosis from this injury for life, for recovery, and prognosis how the function was restored. The last part is epic crisis. So in short, you should mention all the scenes about your patients that were mentioned in whole your case history. So actually that's it. It's, it's quite simple and uh, uh, you can manage this. Uh, you can do it in a document file, like Word document. You can type it using your scheme. You can print it out, fill it with your hand and scan it and send it on my email. And you can do it as PDF file or you can do it as PowerPoint presentation. It's up to you. So this scheme was prepared for you for your reference. So waiting for your uh, reports. And that's all for today. And I think I'll prepare another another video about how we're going to make a test, how it will be held, and I will upload it as well. So keep on with the channel. Thank you very much.